through the lifetime of any particular shark, they might generate many thousands of teeth, which is thousands of potential fossils. If we call a fish anything that's fish-shaped and anything that's evolved from it, it means that essentially we're bony fish. The sharks were so successful because their elementary body plan, their streamlined body shape, their mobile jaws, their flexibility in their skeleton, their maneuverability, their excellent senses as well. This all together make them top predators. You could easily imagine them uh, inhabiting fairly murky uh, waters. You have the double effect of both an impact which overloads the climate or the earth system with debris and perhaps causes nuclear winter followed by volcanism which can cause sustained damage to the atmosphere in terms of gas which is released from the volcanic event as well so that effectively what you have is a double whammy take away the food at the bottom of the food web um, then you can see how extinctions might then trickle up through the food web. This is a big tooth. This must have been I would think about 50 to 60 feet long this shark absolutely massive. When you're the size of a small submarine, the chances of, of turning on a dime and, uh, and chasing something are somewhat limited. It probably had a, a, a 500 metre stopping distance. Columbus probably wouldn't have made it across the Atlantic if uh, uh, these things had been out there. <laughs> At least uh, I wouldn't have volunteered. I don't think in the whole history of man's abuse of animals we've ever killed quite so many of one species. It's just a hugely cruel process in many cases as well. And it really does need bringing to light because we have nothing to be proud of with regard to sharks at all.